Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever part of the world you are in. I hope you are thriving and not just surviving. Welcome to yet another episode of BizWords. My name is Noman Nasrullah and I am speaking to you live from the Funworks base in Dubai. I am very, very passionate about growth, personal and organizational, and that's exactly what I do uh, as, as work and as living. I facilitate growth for organizations and individuals. Today, the topic is very, very interesting. It's The title is Crafting a Career. It's based on a lot of questions that we asked. We get asked and about a lot of success stories on how people have actually crafted their careers, how they've crafted their growth, and how they can or we can actually decode growth and go up the ladder uh, in our careers as fast as possible. I have with me a panel of experts uh, who have worked in multiple countries, um, who have worked in multiple sectors, and they have interesting stories to share also. Uh, let me start with uh, Asher. Asher is a seasoned HR professional. Um, he would share his stories in the different sectors that he's worked in. So I don't want to um, leak those secrets as yet right now. But Asher is somebody who I have always had the pleasure of speaking to and get insights, especially when he was in Dubai and he was he was with IFCO. Right now he is in he's 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 live uh, uh, with us from Karachi. Asher, you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, why not? Uh, hi, everyone. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, good evening, as uh, as Noman said in his introduction to everyone. Uh, I am currently working as uh, Chief People Officer at Kia Lucky Motors in based in Karachi. Uh, and before that, uh, it's it's been a long story. I've been working now for over 27 years, so I will not really go particularly into all the details, but I have worked across industries. Uh, and across types of companies as well. When we talk about MNCs, we talk about uh, locally owned enterprises, family owned enterprises, and financial sector as well. So that's in a nutshell. Not sure. And I think the order is it is it so? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's right. It's a, it's a bit of challenging times right now. Uh, but yes, uh, we are looking forward. Interesting. You keep challenging yourself and you keep changing sectors and then going forward. Next, I have with me Nawaz. Nawaz, are you there? Yeah, Nawaz is there with us. Uh, your screen seems to be a bit stuck. Is that so, Nawaz? Can you hear us? Nawaz, you, I think you're having a little bit of internet uh, problems. Maybe if you want to go... Maybe you might want to come back online. You might want to disconnect and 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 then rejoin us. All right, Nawaz is probably reconnecting. Um, by the time Nawaz comes back, I have Shaukat Shaukat Ali Khan here with me. Uh, Shaukat comes from the northern areas of Pakistan originally. Uh, an amazing success story. Um, I, I can I can call Shokat a friend also. I've always looked up to him and, and his success story, and he, he will share his story in much more detail. But Shokat started by going to Sweden for his master's, and there's 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 a, there's a very interesting story behind that also. And from there, Shokat moved on to uh, Copenhagen uh, uh, in, in in Denmark. Shokat has worked with. Uh, with, uh, with with the UNICEF headquarters in, in, in Copenhagen. And recently, Shokrat, for the love of his mountains, came back to University of Central Asia. Um, and he's a chief information officer over there. But Shokrat, you want to tell a little bit more about yourself to us? Sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Norman. And uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, yes, uh, you, you rightly say that uh, uh, currently I'm working at the University of Central Asia as a chief information officer. And then the University of Central Asia is a unique university of its type. Uh, there's a lot of echo coming. Uh, university of Central Asia is a unique. Uh, you want to check the echo or? I am checking. Uh, uh, there's everything normal from our, our side, but there is some echo. You can keep talking. I'll try and figure yeah, something out. And Asha, Asha, you can mute, then, then I think it should be fine. Actually, probably if you can mute yourself, there would be a mic somewhere on your uh, screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. I should mute it. All right. So, uh, University of Central Asia is a unique university, as I, I said, because this is the only university in the world which has been chartered from three parliaments in Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. 
Uh, and it, it is under an international treaty, which has been signed by the uh, presidents of all three countries in, and then His Highness the Aga Khan. And it has been uh, registered the United Nations. So it's a, it's a unique university in a sense that it's, as, as you rightly mentioned, it's for developing the mountain societies. And our campuses are in the far flung areas. So I'm currently serving as, as a chief information officer uh, responsible for innovation and technology across all four countries and 15 locations. And, and before uh, going to Bishkek, Central Asia, uh, I was the global head of uh, infrastructure for No Nodisk. Uh, and No Nodisk is the world leader in diabetes care. Uh, so I was responsible for the IT infrastructure for No Nodisk for around 80 countries. And before No Nodisk, uh, I was uh, working uh, as, a, as a lead uh, uh, IT operations and infrastructure for UN headquarters in Copenhagen. Uh, and before that, I was in with uh, Lockheed Martin. It's a U.S. Uh, defense company, and, and then as uh, you mentioned, the Marriott Hotel also. So that's how my my career uh, is about. Wow. And I'm originally from Hunza, from Gilgit, Baltistan region in Pakistan. Amazing! Thank you for 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 for, for the introduction, Shaka. Nawaz, uh, Nawaz. Uh, uh, I uh, I usually uh, tell people he's he, he's my go-to person uh, when I get stuck with with certain decisions and uh, uh, HR challenges and HR problems. Him being in Dubai uh, 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 helps us uh, uh, helps me very easily to to pick up the phone and, and go to him. Seasoned HR professional again. Uh, but hardcore hospitality uh, has worked in multiple countries from from Australia to Oman to, uh, to the whole of Gulf, basically the Middle East uh, and even Pakistan. Uh, uh, born and brought up in Dubai, uh, Nawaz is also a cricketer. And Nawaz, if I'm not wrong, you were part of the UAE cricket team back in the 90s, I believe. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Great. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Yes, I was I was not born here. I was born in Lahore, but I grew up in Dubai. So basically, okay. I've been here since 1970s. And I did my early school education. And then I went to, yeah, I was revealing my age. But it's good. I was still young. So moving forward, I did my kindergarten school here. Then I moved to Australia for my higher education, my college and university. Started my hospitality career there. Uh, it's been 25 years. Yes, uh, loving it, still hardcore, as you said, uh, in hospitality. But during my career, I did do a transition into other fields as well, where I had the opportunity. I was very fortunate uh, to work for the world's largest NGO as a Red Cross. Uh, mm -hmm. I was quite involved in their uh, in the development of their uh, uh, training structure and development. Uh, I, I can say I can have I can hold the beacon. I was able to introduce uh, mental health uh, learning in the red cross and also was able to instill a business acumen uh, what was required i went in as a volunteer i ended up getting a job there while i was doing my masters back in australia so so that is a in a nutshell uh, i worked in you know six to seven different countries traveled to approximate 60 countries out of that i would say 12 to 13 countries where i was involved in the task force on a project working with other hotels uh, developing them and uh, last question, which you asked me of cricket. Yes, uh, that's in my blood, uh, being a Pakistani as well. Uh, able to represent uh, UAE under 19, the first ever team in 90s, which went to England. Was also I'm also an ICC certified coach uh, as well. Uh, and uh, also coached Oman under 17 team to play ICC under 17 Asia Cup back in 2003, I believe. And also, you know, still involved in the uh, cricket fraternity. So, in a nutshell, this is what who I am. Great, thank you, thank you very much, Nawaz. Thank you, uh, Asher, and thank you, Shokat, for 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 joining me in in this uh, conversation. Um, and interestingly, I think COVID has brought a lot of people together. So, those Shokat. Uh, work base is somewhere in Central Asia. He's right now stuck in Copenhagen, Denmark with his family. I hope happily. Uh, Asher is joining us from Karachi and Nawaz and uh, me are in Dubai, but in, in different bases. So getting um, down to our topic itself, everybody who's online, I would rec I would request you to please drop in your name and your uh, and which city you're joining us from. We would also be taking questions from you in the next segment. So do do drop in any questions that you have. Um, I have uh, Saad uh, Yusufani, uh, Saad Yusufani uh, joining us from Karachi. I have Zora 
joining us from Funworks Karachi and I have Saheb Kareem I believe Saheb is joining us from from Dublin Ireland um uh, and I also have Danish Ashalwani joining me all right so the topic today is about crafting a career it's about going up the ladder um but um and 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 you have uh, all of you have gone up the ladder uh Let's listen to your personal stories first, right? Um, kya tha aisa jo kya hasil kya aisa tha jiska shayad afsos hai? Um, uh, ya kya aisi chizat thi jo galtiyan ki jo guide karna chahenge jo dusro ko nahi karna chahiye? And what were some of the quick successes that you were got? So, uh, let me start with Asher. Asher banker. बैंकिंग से स्टार्ट लिया एच आर में कहा से जो है वो आप पहुंच गए क्या स्टोरी है शेयर विद अस अ लिटिल बिट सो सो मी क्विकली अनम्यूट यू ओवर हियर आई लेट्स लेट्स लिसन टू योर सक्सेस एंड योर करियर स्टोरी फर्स्ट एंड देन आई विल कम बैक टू हाउ वी कैन क्राफ्ट आर करियर फर्स्ट आई विलिसन टू ऑल दोरीज एंड आई कम टू हाउ वी कैन क्राफ्ट आर करियर सो या आशोर All right. Thank you very much, Noman, and thank you uh, for giving this opportunity. Let me quickly start by saying that uh, my career, uh, like perhaps all careers, which we get to understand a little later, uh, unfortunately, in our lives, is full of was full of shocks and surprises, and I believe there are still a few left in store. So <laughs> yes, I did my I did my BBA honors and MBA way back in 1992 from IBA, and. and that's where the whole story starts that the for the first 6 months of my post mba period i kept looking for a job and that was the time when iba grads were supposed to get jobs before they get graduated so yes. i was shocked that was the first shock which came my way and my family also was looking forward to my job coming from a middle class background and i kept struggling for my first offer for for 6 months and that was the first shocker which came my way i got into a company uh, uh, initial in a, for the first job uh, which is known as engro chemicals it, it it wasn't engro corporation at that time it was just engro chemicals i got into it and i i uh, i was very happy everyone was delighted at home uh, and in 3 months time i was posted to a place known as muzaffargar which is a place near multan in pakistan and i had to sell fertilizer so i started selling fertilizers now i'll do fast forward because uh, 27 years is too long to cover right now i'll just focus on the e learnings which i which i got and after serving at engro for 6 7 months i realized that i'm not cut out for muzaffargar and i came back to karachi i resigned and then i got into what you very kindly introduced me in your introduction i got into banking and this was mcb bank uh and for the next 9 years of my career this is the fast forward i was a banker for all intents and purposes and my area of specialization was credit and risk management so all day i was doing cash flow analysis balance sheets income statements assessing the worth of corporate clients whether to extend to them working capital facilities or long term finance so that was my bread and butter for 9 years uh, first 9 years of my career and today i have been introduced as an hr professional so uh, So someone who 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 market who graduated as a marketing major wanted to become a brand manager. That's the dream I came out with uh, from IBA. I have never worked in my career in brand management at all. I have never been a brand manager. I have never worked in marketing. I became a banker for a good almost one decade. and now i am an hr professional so so much for shocks and surprises which all of us are destined that is that is my first learning which i got that no matter what you plan if you are working hard if you are working smartly you should not be bothered about where you will end up because that is not in your hand and that's what i have learned from my career so this is this is a, a simple a small bit from my story this gets as strange as that in 2002 when i was still with mcb and i was still a banker if someone would have uh, dropped into my office uh, one fine morning or evening and would have told me that look asher uh, in five and a half years time you will be heading hr of a multinational corporation i the, the, my only response to that gentleman or lady would have been that perhaps you you did not have your breakfast this morning <laughs> so, so i mean the, honestly that's that's what i would have said but exactly after 5 and a half years i was heading hr of an mnc so this is this is uh, this is 
something which which i would which i wanted to share uh, in this particular session that uh, we need to focus on what we are doing in today and then we need to rely on god and then we need to listen to what we what we want to uh, what is going on in our heart and then move on in life then we need to chill uh, things will turn out the way they have to turn out based on what you are with the effort which you have put in my last bit before we move on to the other panelist is that we we uh, we if we have the luxury if we have the luxury then we need to always listen to our heart because heart guides you right and when i link it with my career the first 9 years i was doing all right i mean but i was not enjoying what i was doing i was mm. never a person i was never a quantitative person when i used to do those balance sheets and cash flow analysis it was a drag every day in my life the moment i incidentally switched over to training and hr that was the moment when i realized that i enjoy people i love conversing with people right the moment and that is the day onwards that i have not looked back i have enjoyed every day in hr i have i've been in this area so yes my final bit is that we need to listen to our hearts that what we what we enjoy doing and that's what we need to do thank you that's amazing and i think we'll come back to that in a, in, in in a little while where people say that i don't enjoy what i'm doing i'm stuck in my career but when the opportunity strikes they are not ready for it uh let me quickly go to nawaz nawaz your story of crafting your career how did you craft it ed? how did you land up in hospitality probably leaving cricket behind um yeah a little bit of your story great thank you no i'm i always wanted to be a hotelier uh mm -hmm. when i was young uh, and uh, cricket was a passion and it's in my blood you know i still enjoy it as well though i don't play namaz namaz your story of sorry yeah yeah namaz can you hear me now yeah we can hear you now yes okay so as i said you know cricket is part of my you know bread and butter i still enjoy it I think Nawaz, we've sadly lost you again. We we we've, we've sadly lost you again. You might want to disconnect and come back. I believe you're probably having a little bit of an internet issue. I'll come back to uh, to Nawaz. So Shokat, from mountains to the mountains, taking a detour via Denmark. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you crafted your career and what were some of the key insights that you would like to share with others. Yeah. Uh thank you Noman and it's it's very interesting because uh, this is the first interview I am doing where I am telling my own story. Generally I when I when I and I and I uh, the media call me and then they ask me for a certain technological or representing my institution. So this is the first time I am I'm sharing with public about my own story. So I never thought about technology in my my childhood. I am from uh, from Gilgit Baltistan. I did my um, early education from uh, public school and college which is one of the best uh, schools in in, the, in that part of the world and then i went to the pakistan air force college in in murray which is a, a an air force college so it's a very disciplined and then i wanted to go to uh, the uh, pakistan army uh, but somehow i ended up in um, because uh, i i got inspired by my roommate roommate's father who who used to be in merchant navy so i i i changed my mind and then i went towards the merchant navy to start with but then i went and i learned more about the merchant navy then i thought this is not me then at that time there was a boom in uh, it in 1999 and there was one university who was uh, offering the bachelor in, in engineering in information technology so i got in the important part is that when the first day of my university i did not know how to turn on my computer wow. when i was sitting in the lab so I, I requested my the lab assistant. I was pretty embarrassed also, but I, then I requested that uh, how I can do, and then that's how he showed me, and then that's how I, I started my uh, computer career. And 15 years later, uh, it's a it's a blessing of God that I was then leading the technology for the biggest company in Scandinavia. So that that was um, that started uh, my journey. That I, I I started my engineering in Karachi, and then I started. Uh, uh, an internship with uh, Siemens in, in Karachi. Then I, I came back to Islamabad in the uh, Marriott uh, Hotel. Uh, and then a couple of years after, then um, I was selected for, for Lockheed Martin. It's, a, it's the world's biggest uh, 
um, defense company. So I, I worked for them for, for a couple of years before I came to uh, um, Sweden for my, my master's and then my, my career moved on from there. But no. what, I'm, what, what I'm saying is that... Your master's uh, was completely sponsored, isn't it? Yes, yes, it was. It was and it was not by... an opportunity that just fell in your lap. You just tell us a little bit about that because this is an interesting insight. Uh, yes, uh, actually, my master's was uh, offered by the. Uh, at, at, during those times in Sweden, the education was free, but uh, I was looking for a, a sponsorship for my travel and accommodation. And British Airline actually uh, did uh, did that for me, uh, and then uh, that's how I ended up in uh, Sweden. Uh, and I did my um, uh, masters, and then during my studies, then I got a job in Denmark, uh, uh, and I completed my studies while I was working as a, as a full-time employee with, with the UN headquarters here in Denmark. So I think the important part, uh, which I would like to share with everyone, is that a, a big career, and especially an international career, is a journey. Is a journey. So it's not like you just get from one one year and next year. It, you have to start during your childhood. For example, right. I'm from a community where the community service has been very, very important in our, our careers, uh, in our lives and during that time. And then those times when the community service was in scouting and other, other places, our parents used to encourage me. And that's how we got the confidence. We got the top skills, which we then, uh, for example, if I reflect back, all those skills of uh, leadership, of communication, of team management, working in diversity, those things were developed during our, our childhood when we were doing the uh, uh, community service. And then those are, uh, we got the benefit, actually, I personally got the benefit when, when, I, uh, when I was on the international stage. So what, what I would like to say to my audience is that if you have young kids, just give them the confidence. Give them the confidence so that they should think big, so that they can, they can talk in front of people and then encourage them, encourage them and encourage them. That's the only way if you, if you want them to end up in, in a good good career, and at least if you want to get uh, get them in, uh, to stand on their own feet in, in the future. Right, Shokan. And before I go to Nawaz, um, once people land up in Europe, they land up in a in a multinational leader in in diabetes care, pharmaceutical, reach very very high positions. They don't usually want to come back to Asia or the developing world, as they say. What brought you back to the mountains? Yeah, as, as, you, um, as I mentioned, and then you rightly mentioned in, in my introduction, I am from the mountains. And in my, in my, in my head, it was, it was always there that one day when I am on that level, when I will be able to contribute something towards my community and towards the mountain societies, then I will go back. And Alhan Development Network uh, contacted me a year and a half ago that uh, we have this position. And then after a, a very intensive recruitment process, then I got a chance to, to, to head the, uh, the IT part for, uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, University of Central Asia. And then when I, when I see the vision of His Highness, what they are doing in University of Central Asia and the whole organization, it's to develop the mountain societies, not only on that part, but all the mountain societies. And, and recently, as, as you know, I've, I've, I've been um, appointed by the president of Pakistan the, as, uh, in the, as a member in the KIU Senate, which is the character of international university, which is in Gilgit, Baltistan. So I will okay. get a chance now to serve uh, in the board of that university also. And this was my dream to go back and then work for the community and work for the society. Right. As, so, as so the career is not about getting everything. It's sometimes also about giving. As, as Asher said, do what your heart says. And, you know, I think about, about learning from you is the growth comes from confidence, but then self-actualization is also very, very important. Nawaz, I hope the internet works. And you know what, Nawaz, when we travel, uh, especially as trainers and consultants, we go around around the region, uh, you know, we go around the world. And the most important thing for us in a hotel is a Wi-Fi. And when the Wi-Fi disconnects, you know what we feel. So you might be feeling it right now. I don't know if you're at home or you're at work, uh, uh, but um, uh, and, and I don't know if it's the Wi-Fi or it's it's a, it's a, it's it's the internet or it's just just fate. But tell us a little bit of that story of yours, where probably you've had connections and you've had disconnections also, and and then how did that work? Good. And yeah, Wi-Fi is I think has become a necessity for us, all of us. But somehow I'm back online. Hopefully I stay online as well. So coming back to my career, uh, I'm so I was very fortunate that I knew exactly when I was young that what I wanted to do, apart from playing cricket. 
So I had the opportunity and I chose a country where I could go and travel and mm -hmm. also play my cricket and also study. So the best choice for me at that time was England was too cold. And then I said, you know, the best opportunity was to be in Australia with the summer. So, and Pakistan at that time has just won the World Cup in 92. So I, I landed up in Australia in 92 as well. So that was by coincidence as well. So, so that's where I started. So apart from studying hospitality, I did also uh, venture into venture into other discipline of uh, education, such as in marketing or management or in, in HR. Because to be uh, and for me, why hospitality? When I said was it's not that I wanted a particular career; it's a lifestyle which I enjoyed. And mm. uh, being being a cricketer before and traveling as well, you stay in different hotels. You get to get, see you know, the good part of, you know, hard work when you stay in a hotel. So I wanted to enjoy that lifestyle. And of course, you start your career in our industry. It's all about experience-based industry. So you had to start somewhere very young. Uh, while you're still studying, you need to be a waiter or you, work, you need to work in the kitchen or you work in a steward. You need to do your rooms cleaning, your toilet cleaning. So you have to go through the whole nine yard because you have to, you have to do your hours uh, part of your certification to to get graduation, you need to do your hours and you have to do your internship. So we did that all, and then I maneuvered into different part of hotel operations. And I think it's where you you aim what you want to. And uh, my always aim was that I wanted to work for the best hotel uh, in that city. So uh, while I was in Perth, so one of the best hotel in that city to get the opportunity in the same hotel at the Hyatt to work for. And I did my 15 years, almost 15 years with Hyatt and, you know, in four different countries with them as well. Uh, so which gave me an opportunity, a kickstart where I wanted to because the learning and development program, the graduate program was uh, was to talk of town because it was a school of hospitality, you know, for, in the industry. And, and it was a, where where you could see and develop. What I what really inspired me that you know it's an it's a it's an endless game where you where do you want to be. So mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough. I had great leaders and managers and supervisors around me who actually pushed me to the limit. It's not that I only worked in my particular department. I wanted to be something different. So I used to take every given opportunity during my lunch time, or during my meetings, or when I'm in the hotel to go and work on my relationship and networking with it with other departments and division heads and get mm. to learn from their success stories mm. how did they reach where they are today well, what made them to be there where they are today and all of right. them has given me certain inputs uh, from being a coach or to a mentor and i'm mm. very fortunate still today i'm in still con in contact with my first hr director 25 years ago and and mm -hmm. I'm in contact with the GM who was my first GM as well. So basically you build up that relationship. And as I said, for us, it's a lifestyle what we enjoy. And what I've learned from all of them was all to do with the being disciplined, what you want to do. Second thing is what they always taught me is, it's not that you want to grow in your career. You need to be honest to your career. Means when they say honest to your career, you need to really know about your own capabilities. And there's no learning on capabilities you learn every single day if you say you're a master of everything forget it so you learn through the whole process and the mm. last thing what they really taught me was being accountable mm. accountability starts if i'm in the position today i need to be 100 percent accountable what i've been hired for and what is mm. my job role and what i need to do to make a difference and when we talk about crafting a, or decoding a growth and that was my learning itself if i want to go to my next career if I want mm -hmm. to be a general manager, if I want to be, if I want to be somewhere in my next growth, I need to make sure that I do seventy-five percent of the job what my general manager does, or my other division head does. So you need to not only work on your own role, you need to start working on the next role and start learning on all the uh, all the job description is one thing, but that is given that all of you get job description. But what extra you need to work hard means if you need to really work on your financial acumen, you need to work on it. If you need to really work on your marketing acumen, you need to work on it. And if I say that, you know, hospitality industry actually teaches you what that, because in one, yeah. in one, in one, uh, in one hotel, you are connected in, you are, what, what we do in a hotel is to look after our guest. Very right. simple. Yeah. And for yeah. us, the guest is our call, a guest who comes and pay, pays and stays, or the guest mm -hmm. is my colleagues who works and looks after those guests. 
So right. it works. So it's a it's a dimensional 360 degree dimensional where you need to really work hard on on the whole thing. Right. And coming back to the crafting the career, I think one of the biggest pitfall what I have seen in my career or around me as well is is the patience. Mm -hmm. As young young uh, and young uh, or you know with the generation we are working with nowadays or generation X Y Z or millennium, the patient level may not be there because they want the growth to be very advanced mm -hmm. uh, at a very quick pace. Coming back to our hospital industry, it comes is an experience based industry. Mm -hmm. So that's where there's a clash at times as well. So that's why we, as a senior leadership team, what we work with our juniors are we give them the stretch assignments. We make sure we we work with them and we, we make sure that they keep engaged. And I think when we craft a career, engagement is a key factor for your own motivation to make a difference. Right. And, much, and, and the last part, which I have learned throughout my career till today, and I still believe in that, you know, you will always get rejections in your life. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn through it. So if you are used to getting rejection and working through through that difference, that will make you a better person because our aim is to become a better individual, not a business leader. Because once you become a better individual, you can start to work on, to work within your community, you can work within your neighborhood, or you work, can work within your stakeholders. So this is how your whole career. And as I said, I've been very fortunate to work in seven different countries in three different continents. I have, at one time, I was working with 110 different nationalities. So that gives you an enormous understanding of different cultural background uh, with different languages, what you need to manage and do it. And that's where it gives you, at the end of the day, you have to believe in your own trust. You need to trust on your own capabilities. And I think right. that leads you a long way. Right. So... Uh, <clears throat> As Nawaz said, you know, be open to rejections and uh, in our language, we should be able to deed with, with rejections. A moment rejections bring us down, but deed can be able But Nawaz, you spoke, about, you spoke about pitfalls. And let me quickly go to Ashur and and and, and, and ask him, um, Ashur, uh, what are some of the common mistakes that you see these days that people make with their career? People are going well, suddenly they... They, 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 they hit a pitfall and then they're one position and they're on that position for a long time and then they are sulking and they're not moving ahead. What are some of the common mistakes that you see uh, people make whilst uh, 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 in, in the journey of their career? Asha, you might have to unmute yourself. Yep. Thank you for for highlighting that. That that happens when you are too long into your career. <laughs> so, so so anyway, uh, answer, answering your question, and when it comes to pitfalls, what we commonly see or notice, uh, there are actually too many which which comes to mind. But I would like to focus on a few which I'm experiencing lately. And, uh, and since I keep meeting young people and the people not so young almost every day. Uh, I see these pitfalls getting very common. The first one amongst them, I, I think I'll build on what uh, Nawaz has said, is patience. I see a lot of impatience around me. People wanting things to happen uh, by the evening. Not Nothing beyond that. I think but evening also is now being kind of counted in inverted commas as long term. So if I talk about evening, that is long term. And that is, that is the greatest pitfall I see. The other one, is that people are keeping their careers here and they're not keeping them here on in their hearts so they are more worried than they are they are working for it and they are feeling for it and they are passionate about it more than that they are worried about it and that's never going to work that has never worked that will not work no matter how much the shape and form of the corporate world or post covid or pre covid or uh, changes come this particular principle that you have to feel passionate, you have to be passionate about what you do, this will never change. I am so confident about it. So we don't need to worry all the time that Faisal ka kya ho gaya aur Saima kahan chali gai aur uska PNG mein ho gaya aur wo. This is, this is good for some small talk. This is good for some, some light gossip, but any it, it's not going to go beyond that. So for, for in order to be successful, in order to be fairly, uh, you know, uh, practical, you have to feel passionate about what you're doing and you have to work hard. And the last thing, 
I see a lot of gap these days when I see people, when I meet people, they do not have detail orientation. They, they cut corners, they do it superficially, they are not involved, and at the end of the day, they would come up and complain that, you know, I, I'm not getting the right growth which I was expecting when I was graduating, or I'm not, uh, I'm not getting those kind of, uh, I'm not getting any career plan. But when it comes to detail or orientation, there is a lot of slackness which I, which I notice. And also, uh, allow me to add one more thing, and that is homework, lack of homework. We, we again, this links with detail orientation in a certain way. We do not go into the details. We do not do the required homework, even, even when it, I'm not talking only about what, what concerns an organization, even when it concerns them as professional, they don't even do that homework. So yes, when they talk about joining another organization, they would only look 90% of the people in my humble experience, they only look at the compensation and then they take the dump, just land at, into another place without looking at uh, other things like career growth, learning opportunity, culture of the other organization. And luckily, if they can get to know that who is the supervisor with whom you they're going to work for 10 hours a day, without looking into any of those four things, they just look at the bottom line, they take a, I am getting this jump. This is good enough. I hate this organization where I'm working. And in three months, once the honeymoon period ends, we find them saying, oh my God, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's coming right from the heart of an HR director. And before I go to another HR director, let me go to the information officer, chief information officer. Um, uh, be detail oriented, Asher said. Uh, be uh, patient, Asher said. What are some of the pitfalls that you see uh, um, uh, in, 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 in career growth? What are some of the mistakes that people make? Yeah, I think there is a very interesting discussion. What I have seen so far is that uh, many people, they want to grow fast, as, as it was mentioned, but they are not doing good in what they are. So I think the, the base of growing uh, upwards is to do best in where you are, right? Mm -hmm. If you do whatever you are doing, and if you have the capacity, for example, to do bring new ideas, initiatives, and then bring value to your current one, that's the only time when the organization can see you that you can bring value. And, and as a, a, another mistake is, I think uh, many people are not looking themselves, they are not re reflecting on their own skills, they are looking on others of how, how fast they are growing and then what, what, are, what, what is the lifestyle they have. And this could be that uh, they have the pressures, social pressures and all those things, but I think career does not work like this. Uh, for mm. me, a career is that if I want to be successful, then the base is I need to do, I need to justice with what I, I'm supposed to do in my current position. If I am fulfilling the responsibility of current position, if I am bringing the value, then I think I, I'm able to do, do and then go and do uh, other, other parts. Another one is that I have seen that there is a, a negativity. People are not positive about what, what they are doing and then what the company is doing. They are focusing on some of the negative parts. In every company, there are challenges. In every company, there are uh, potential to improve. But sometimes I have seen that that also creates a lot of a lot of problem. And then the third one is the the consistency because people don't have the consistency if they apply somewhere and then if they don't get that's it. They said, "Oh, I'm not going to get anywhere." So that that is that. I think it was said that we have to be uh, uh, ready for rejections. So I think if we are positive mindset, if we are uh, consistent in our, our uh, career, and if we are hardworking, then gradually we, we get what we want it to. But it takes time. We just need to realize that. Right. And, 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 and this, this is amazing, you know, not being consistent, not persevering, uh, uh, giving up with, with the first rejection that you get, uh, being extremely negative about, about things. Uh, and Asher, as, as Asher said, not being patient. Asher may uh, 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 mention also in a very, very important point that people are just worried about 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 the compensation. Uh, if they're lucky and they find out who they will be working for, is this something very, very important? Because as per researches and statistics, um, the bosses or your line managers can actually make your career or break them completely they uh, so i think that was an important point uh, our audience our viewers who are live with us i would love it if you could share uh, in the comment box what according to you are the common career mistakes that people make 
Uh, Nawaz, coming to you, um, Ashur spoke about the importance of, uh, of, of, of your line manager that you would be working for. Uh, and very few people actually keep that in mind when they're going for a job. How important is your boss? And can you choose your boss? Is it possible to choose your boss? Not at all. Because what happened is when, when we start to work, you know, it's again, there are two ways to look at it. You either work in a controlled environment or you work in an uncontrolled environment. When we talk about control environment is that's where you know exactly if your manager, if your supervisor, if your leader, how they work. So one of the way of your success story is that I, I have always adapted myself as per the need of my leader. I need to really understand his thinking style. I need to really understand his vision and having an honest relationship with him. And that's where it starts with. Because now, whenever pardon me, for, pardon me for, 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 for disrupting you over here, but I, I can't say it in English, you know, uh, the, the word is very bad. But not at all. I think how uh, how you, you know, look at it. What 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 I what I get to listen is usko grow this boss ka kitana chachamchai. How how do we no. counter that? I think that's where I think people get it wrong. I think that's where the cultural environment is because uh, you know I have worked in Pakistan for a limited time, but I've worked more mainly internationally, uh, you know, in, in and I've interacted with you know more than 120 or 160 different nationalities across the world. But if I look at it in Pakistan, I think one of the major issues which I came across is you may say it is right because this is a very controlled and uncon uncontrolled environment mm -hmm. because there's a lot to do with their upbringing, uh, the coaching and the mentoring may, they, they may have received at work or maybe how the system works. You know, in right. Pakistan, if you have used the word being chamcha, I would use another word being parchi. Most of the people are hired through that, right? So let's let's not do not go into that into that discussion. Coming yeah. back to what I have, what my advice is, you know, where I've been, where I, you know, in, across the world, where I've been into a career counseling or career coaching, I've always said to colleagues or, or to the aspiring young leaders, is to really work with your manager, is because that's the person who has who has a big say in your career growth, has a big say who will who will make your way better and will invite will provide you the environment what you need to enhance and to grow and that's where it mostly important comes to and that's why it's so important where as me going into a new role or where i need to develop that relationship it does not mean i need to i need to follow uh, blindly it's basically you work for an organization i do not work for that person I work for that. I think that's where you have to clear. You have to put that, you know, a clear line that you work for that organization for the benefit of the organization, not for that person. That right. person role, if he's, a, if you, or she is a true leader, they will, they will make sure you work as a collaborative approach, not only for them. So that's right. where the. I think it all starts with your supervisor is the trust relationship, and that trust relation relationship leads into a benefit of the whole organization for yourself itself and i think having that open dialogue and having that uh, you know your your three months or your six months or your earlier targets how you want to really approach and do it and creating that culture uh, engagement cul culture among your department or division or among the, among the organization makes such a difference as you know we always say it's, it's old saying you know you walk the talk mm -hmm. we can have great we can have great uh, wisdom quotes around the around the hotel, and if you don't follow it, it all it doesn't. You know where does the law start? It's law, law starts from us. If it, and that starts with our own integrity. You know integrity you know, is. I've heard people saying when I say such things, go have an open dialogue with your boss, talk to him about your growth. Uh, the thing that I hear back is my boss is not an open-minded person. My boss is not interested in my growth. How do we how do we deal with that? I think that's uh, that's a wrong way of thinking because I don't know how what relationship they have. You know, I can only talk about my career growth, and I can talk about the people uh, who have known and have coached it uh, as well, and where they have developed and so far. If we look around this panel, you know, all all four of us, all all three of us, you know, have come through many phases of life. I'm sure if we are here today, where mm. we are sitting, someone has played that important role where we are sitting today. Right. So coming back to your question, where someone says. Uh, you know your manager is not interested then i think that's a ringing bell itself would you like to work for that person <laughs> because at the end of the day you are responsible for career no one else the same way you need to feed yourself means you are responsible for yourself 
So that's where I was coming back to it. I think how you create your own environment, which is control and uncontrolled. I'll give you a prime example. Who would have thought of COVID-19? Would anyone who would have scripted it? No one, right? So it's a very uncontrolled environment. No one can talk about it. What we mm. can do as a leadership team now, we need to make sure we maneuver it into the right direction. Do we have the answer of everything? Absolutely not. That's right. where that's where we need to coach and guide and make sure what are the what are the guidelines given by the government or the local authorities, we abide by it to the best of our knowledge and capabilities. Right. So we can maneuver together as a country and as an organization for the betterment of who? Us. Right. And that's where I always say controlled and uncontrolled environment. Your control environment is yourself. And uncontrolled environment, you can't do anything about it. Force majeure. And that's where it all leads back to your, your own time uh, process thinking. And Asher said a very good thing that people may not have the patience nowadays. But it's a, if you look at the flip side of that coin, maybe they're not being coached properly. Mm. They've been not been trained properly because we can always speak about, you know, we can speak all night on career growth, but we need to ask the individual and it comes to the same simple thing. What do they really want by themselves? Mm -hmm. If they are asking, if they want to uh, climb Mount Everest or Mount Karakoram, you know, let's be realistic. It takes years of years of training to be there, right? Mm -hmm. If someone mm -hmm. says, I want to be a general manager, if I want to be a managing director, it takes years of experience to be there, right? So we as, as a leaders in our industry, we need to coach and guide them. And it's not one off given thing. It's a relationship which is continuous. And that's mm -hmm. why I always coach and guide or mentor. I think these are the three important things, coach, guide, and mentor. We need to tell our colleagues around and individuals that you have to look at it. And again, my last but the most important thing is your own self-reflection. Right. If I am capable of it. You know, to be right. to be a finance director, of course, you need to do your CA. You need to have this. You need to understand the whole operation, the cycle, how it works, right? You can't be yeah. overnight after doing your CA. Yeah, it it's, 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 important to, it's important to look at your reflection, you know, in, in, in the mirror itself. Uh, Asher, you mentioned something very interesting. Opportunity, Mirini Bande Bhagna Shuru Jate or Teen Mene Bad Rote. What is the right time to jump? Why, uh, you know, sometimes it's good to be impatient and 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 and, and, and achieve that uh, 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 opportunity if it's, it's it's coming your way. Uh, when should one jump? What are some of the uh, 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 opportunities that one should grasp? When should one stay? What would you say about that? You need to unmute. Uh, I'll just no, Asha, you're you're still muted. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. G yeah, Asher, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Am I am I am I audible now? You are you are audible, yes. Yeah, okay. My take on that, that's a, that's a very interesting aspect. And actually that is something which happens every day when we see people around uh, making switches from our own organization or from other organizations as well and we bump into them. Uh, I think there is I cannot I cannot really pinpoint that there is a right time to make a switch. Uh, or for what? But I can definitely pinpoint that what what are the what are the right reasons to make a switch? If uh, if you have thought through uh, in terms of what is your plan for your career, uh, and if this particular organization where you're working right now doesn't sink in with your plan, with your personal objectives, with your mission statement, then I think. Uh, one can take a stock of that and then decide that fine, uh, this is good enough a reason for me that I need to move on and look for that particular area or that particular organization which uh, which sinks in with my personal plan or personal mission. So that is that could be one of the right reasons to make a switch. Not that something has turned very frustrating here, or uh, perhaps momentarily it might get corrected in the next six months. Or uh, perhaps I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not getting paid right because you discover after you joining that uh, the salary which was fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, some other people who are sitting beside your desk are getting higher salary, and that is adding to your demotivation or frustration. So all I'm trying to say is that we should we should be looking inward for the reasons of switch, not outward. It's the reasons should not generally be external because external reasons make you take an impulsive decision. You take that while you are frustrated for reasons which are not really your own reasons. 
they are reasons which have been thrusted on you from the from, from the environment so one needs to be cautious and my last word in that would be that switch decision should always be a very well thought out and cool decision unfortunately what i have seen in my career and at least in last 15 years that it's a very impulsive decision which is driven by any immediate frustration uh, in the organization and then it 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 eventually ends into a regret uh, i i think that uh, that's that's amazing uh, uh, insight you know uh, that the switch decision needs to be internally driven and not externally driven uh, and, and most of the times it's sadly externally driven and also it is frustration driven as you said some frustration with my line manager or with my growth or with my hr or with my organization and and, and, and i just flip and, and and that's that's a big mistake that i make um shocker switch not switch when to switch what would you add to that i think it, it, it depends on the people and i i fully agree that it should be a cool uh, uh, thoughtful decision it should not be like on an immediate immediate response that uh, if something goes wrong and then you want to switch because uh, the, the careers are very very important in one's life and then for me i think nowadays um, it has always been focused that how uh, how best we can bring value in whatever because because in whatever organization you are working if you bring value they wanted to hire you back again if you have a good reputation so nowadays uh, if as a technology person i think my suggestion would be uh, that uh, work but work hard is something is going on but work smart is another one that uh, just think through what you are doing and then how you can optimize the the work you are doing i think that will already satisfy you and your boss and then i would like to just comment on one thing uh, which uh, nawaz mentioned and then based on your question about the relation between the boss and and the and the employee and i think that is that is very very interesting because in my experience throughout my uh, i always do the uh, housekeeping with my my boss the ground ground rules of okay how transparent we should be and then please expect and ask the feedback from the boss and then give him or her the feedback also if you will give them the feedback they will see your honesty and then be honest and then direct with your boss instead of he will hearing things from other person just be direct and then tell him if there is something misunderstanding and then get the right uh, direct uh, feedback from from your boss and i think and as an employee my experience is that i insist for feedback i ask them look i need the feedback can you give me the feedback and then i give feedback also and then that already settles a lot of a lot of problems because that shows your loyalty your focus and then your professionalism and i think with with that you can create if the boss is not thinking already then you can create this environment where you can work together and then bring value uh, for for the organization and then the last one um, i would say in in this uh, domain is that uh, i think the the new uh, paradigm of working is that wherever you work if you don't bring value to whatever organization you are you will not have any value in the organization so right. i think that we need to reflect on ourselves what value we are bringing to the organization right and and, and you know that that famous quote of kennedy about don't ask what the country can do for you ask what you can do for the country um i think i've i've twisted a little bit i uh, don't ask what value my organization is bringing to me ask what value are you giving to the organization and i think that's that's important you know we don't think about the value that we can bring to the organization um uh, and 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 and, and we are always expecting things coming our way rather than things going from 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 here uh one of the values nawaz which uh, uh in the career and, and and you rightly mentioned uh, 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 at the beginning of this uh, this conversation that there are quite a few mentors who have built you actually who have helped you uh, uh grow uh, how can one seek a mentor and and is is mentor always your boss or you could seek mentors from within your organization outside your organizations uh, how can one build a relationship or mentorship and how can one get the most out of uh, uh, the mentors uh, i see trust thing i think it's up to the individual how they look at it because i had mentors within the organization as well when not necessarily within the hotel within the organization as a larger group when i was working for hyatt uh, plus you can have mentors who are from a different aspect and fields uh, right. so i was very careful when when it came to being who will be my mentor and who would be my coach right because there are two different okay. things 
right. uh, and then uh, then and again who will be a, a leader or go to go person in my organization or in my department if i'm i'm going through a difficult situation or i need to get some answers so i had right. that and i think that's where my my sports career actually helped me uh, to define really who will be a coach who will be a mentor and who will be my uh, psychometrist uh, to to guide me in my biomechanics and that's where i think the with any relationship either is between a coach or a, or, a, or a person who will guide you or a mentor a matter of trust and belief is that important who understands each other and how you pick that person is actually you need to be honest to yourself who can help, really help me and guide me usually your coach and mentor are the most experienced one to you who have gone through different phases of life they may not be in the same organization but they understand the life skill set i think mm. that's what uh, even shokat said and asha said as well i think we we all look at the capabilities and what values we can bring to the company and again it's what company can give the values it's a two way street you know mm. it's it's a, it's the mm. same thing what we can say either you know chicken came early or the egg the answer is very simple in in the whole scenario situation is that it's a relationship which needs to be built upon which needs to be carried upon and if something breaks it can be anything if someone leaves me after 6 month i need to really figure it out why or maybe we hired the wrong person at the start there are two ways to look at it if someone leaves me after 5 years maybe we are not able to provide an opportunity to that person and they had to leave mm. so you need to look at both the angles or all 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 the angles in in a formative way to really understand and that's where your your agility of understanding a brain mm. or or a person plays mm. such an important role what mm. is good for you again as a human being we are all self interested whether we like it or not what's in in my pocket yeah very yeah. rare very mm. rare you will come across a person who wants to work for themselves and i'll give you prime example my motive when i wanted to work for red cross i went in as a volunteer i ended up getting a job because i showed my passion there and mm. they they offered me and same way i have worked so many times on projects where i did not go for money but i went for an experience mm. because i really wanted to really understand and learn on, on my skill set and i think that's where it is and i uh, i can proudly say till date i have not worked for money i worked for myself always but what motivates me what energizes me and what wakes me up every single day to get out of the bed because i'm motivated and noman you have known me as well in my career i worked for one company for 15 years but in that 15 years i left them four times mm. why mm. because i mm. could not connect with someone and i had to leave because of maybe a manager maybe a reason did not work it out or maybe there was not an opportunity but as an organization and myself we were honest to each other so the, for the fifth time they still hired me right right same and, way and you put the right connections and the right network still intact uh, 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 when they when they hire you so i think that's 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 interesting um, that you know mentorship is 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 something that you need to seek mentors and you need to uh, and you made a very important point that your go to person where you go and vent out and you cry could be probably somebody different your mentor is different and your coach is different and it's uh, and i think that would be a separate episode where we'll probably go into the details of of learning from your sporting career that how do we fix our biomechanics how who do we hire as a coach but but that's an that's an important insight you know usually we have only one person that we go to for everything and that person may not no. necessarily be the right right person for uh, for everything uh, for for our viewers who are live right now if you have any questions about crafting your career from the panel please go ahead and post them in the comments and and i'll be asking them in 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 a, in a very short while uh ashtar mentor seek seeking mentors going for mentors trying to get mentors um are people really ready to mentor you do they have the time to mentor you and how can mentorship really help you in crafting your career no i think we asha are you with us you probably still muted Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this could, okay. The question is for me. The question is for you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I think uh, 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 what I feel is that mentoring someone or coaching someone uh, it's 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 uh, it's a skill 
uh which obviously with which is required number one number two is the mentor or the coach has to have passion for that as well so from that perspective i would say that uh, we do not find a lot of people who would end up doing that people and especially when we, when we say people we talk about line managers uh, we do not find lot many they are more focused on getting the assignment done rather than uh, holding the hand and uh, taking someone through or making him or her learn the ropes uh, but at the same time uh, i would say as an hr it's my job in the organization to not only to not only look after a lot of things which i do every day is also to hunt for mentors there are some people who are cut out for that and then we can utilize or leverage them within the organization so that we can if i want to craft my career and i'm looking for mentorship uh, how can i go and approach a, a, a mentor can i just walk up to anybody in my organization or any other organization ask for mentorship what should what should i do if uh, uh, to to get the right mentor and the right mentorship i think that is that that is something which can be done one can be one can search for a mentor as well not necessarily in your organization but in other organizations or at certain forums or at certain uh, clubs or 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 other places where but yes like any other thing in life you will have it, this is something very very important so one has to search and explore also mentor cannot be found if you are not finding one in in your proximity one has to make an effort one has to make an effort and what should one look for when they are i think uh, uh, the first trait is that the, the the mentor should be someone whom you can look up to and mm-hmm. someone who has a story to tell someone who is a patient uh, listener also who can uh, who can hear your side as well what exactly you are looking for what exactly you are in search of so those are the things which uh, a mentee a potential mentee should be looking for while searching for a mentor and i think uh, it in in i mean you do you don't really go around looking for a mentor you are talking to a lot of people and then it clicks it immediately clicks that yes there you go this is the person who can teach me more about career and life and other things right interesting so um coming uh, shakat is there any point you would like to add on 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 seeking mentorship yeah i think um, i i was lucky because the company i i used to work for lockheed martin when i was hired the first two people they gave me is that who would be my buddy at the at the company and on day one and who will be my mentor uh, and that is something organizational responsibility they take and i think this this is one thing also, also to look into for for our uh, hr industry and also for the companies because no one audits is one of the most attractive companies in in scandinavia that people wanted to work in one of the reasons why is that they take care of these things for you for example when i joined no notice they suggested me that they are they could be your mentor uh, mentors and then the mentors know that there is organizational responsibility on them to uh, to also mentor the the newcomers and also not the, everyone uh, not everyone could be this lucky right not every organization probably has these systems so what should i do if my organization is not offering those systems i, I think it is also very very important that is is uh, nawaz i think already mentioned that a career is something your individual responsibility right mm-hmm. and then uh, i know what i want it to be in 5 year time and 10 years time and then what i need to take to those those jumps to 5 year and 10 year and then we see for example the computer helped us uh, at the moment the whole world and all people are around us like for example if we are connected to the people who you think that we, we can follow their stories are there we can connect them through linkedin through our networks if we can try for example right and then there are so many people out there you know within our network within outside our network who can guide us and i have seen then there are a lot of people that if you will you will try to get an advice from them mostly mostly they 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 respond and then they can help you if you want but you need to be genuine that you want the advice not like the job or something uh, direct advantages of of that connection if if you ask them to seek the advice on on certain things i think for now uh, at this stage when technology is so good around us uh, we can find all these things uh, for us if we can try our best right okay um i- interesting so seek a mentor not a benefit asher you want to you 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 want to yeah. add something yeah. i would just like to add one line that when we say the word mentor normally what comes to mind is a senior 
or is someone who has really he's up there and has has done it in life so we should surround him and ask him ke wo wahan tak kaise pahunche my 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 experience is that i have i have got mentors in my peer group as well in my batchmates also i have seen mentors in my juniors also they have mentored me so i have been i have been in as i said we have to be in hunt for mentors all around you can get you cannot get a full complete combo package where you will get menti mentorship for everything in your life so you have to look for bits and pieces you can get some advice from your father you can get some mentorship from your uh, from your junior as well so that's how we need to look at it rather than uh, looking for certain as i said combo package in one person that's that's that's, 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 that's you don't get a combo deal in 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 mentorship you you always have to go for um uh what's that word nawaz a la carte uh, you have to pick and choose what you want to eat you don't get a buffet deal over here uh, yeah mix and match plug and play yeah, yeah there's, there's there's no buffet deal um in, interesting insights uh, thank you very much uh, uh, uh for 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 your time uh, nawaz asher and 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 shokat before i move towards an end a very quick rapid fire and this is what i ask all my guests our topic for today was crafting your career uh and this is this is rapid fire one phrase that comes to your mind or one word that comes to your mind the minute i say crafting your career nawaz have a game plan have a game plan okay crafting your career have a game plan shakat you're muted shakat yeah uh, work smart work smart have a game plan work smart asher crafting your career rapid fire you're muted asher there we go yes i'll i'll, I'll uh, make it a, a bit longer than half a phrase i would say that uh, i'll seek a refuge in one of the sayings which said that we crucify ourselves in regrets of yesterday and fears of tomorrow so we need to invest in today that's the most important thing interesting yeah that's 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 an amazing insight also again thank you very much for joining and uh, uh um, i i'm sure there was a lot of insights that our viewers have got and um this was a live session it would be on our youtube channel at funworks media so if you've not pressed that bell icon please do that press the bell icon so you get updates of future uh we would continue with our uh, crafting your career sessions as well as other buzzwords that 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 comes uh, that, that that are always happening uh thank you very much again asher for great insights thank you nawaz for 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 great insights and thank you shokat for great insights and thank you all who were live with us for this past one hour thank you very much i would be ending this podcast by now i hope wherever you are as i said in the beginning you are thriving and not just surviving make an effort to master yourself and thrive and not just survive thank you very much there are some people who have just saying it was very informative varun thank you varun for that thank you varun for joining imtiaz is saying good debate thank you imtiaz for joining us uh, ritesh gurung is saying nice debate thank you ritesh for uh for joining us and uh and 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 saheb lastly is saying thank you for your contribution thank you sai for joining us thank you everyone once again i will be bringing this 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 live broadcast to an end i hope that you we keep connected and asher shokat and nawaz i hope that you would join us in future for 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 other uh episodes also thank you very much thank you thank you for the opportunity thank you very much